What's going on, fellow A plusers? It is I, your more phenomenal host, Adam Perez, back once again with a brand new review as we're set to go ahead and get into Ultraman Trigger episode number 23. That's right, guys. We've got what, like two more episodes certainly left for this season. We're almost there. I cannot wait to go ahead and wrap up this particular series. And just based off of what we've gotten so far, especially here in episode number 28, while I personally have not seen the preview for the next episode, the idea that we sort of have like a three part sort of culmination to this season uh, really gets me excited to kind of see exactly how all the pieces are really going to fall into place honestly so um, I guess you can really say like the final arc really began last weekend with Hoodrum certainly um, showcasing what he's capable of in this episode though we get to focus a little bit more on Dargon and really sort of the falling apart of the partnership that is sort of the giants of darkness right um, get an opportunity to see in this episode the confrontation that we get between Dargon along with Carmera and seeing that Carmera also has plans for Dog Dargon and having his uh, having her way with him. Uh, it definitely did make me chuckle a little bit just seeing uh, Carmera once again when it comes to Hoodrum eating him up alive in the sense of like really absorbing his particular dark energy uh, and really using that in this episode against Dargon uh, as her powers have truly doubled if you will and it seems even by the end of this episode uh they've now tripled i guess um not only hers and hoodrums but now dargon in her possession also but to start off this episode i mean we get the opportunity to see that carmara decides to use dargon sort of as a puppet uh to kind of rain destruction down on earth and that's exactly what dargon winds up doing in this episode brilliant action sequence honestly um i thought the the, the fight sequences that we got between trigger and dargon whether that be in his possessed mode or even when they have the honorable duel in the middle of this episode um, great action great scenery especially with sort of the sunset battle out in the forest and amongst the hills uh, it looked fantastic I was really actually looking forward to the more honorable duel part of things uh, especially because of the fact of Dargon kind of looking at Trigger sort of as a current ally but also his former ally 30 million years ago and to kind of square things away and I guess to maybe see who was the strongest I love the concept I truly Really did, um, but I guess maybe I was a little naive in thinking that this sort of battle was going to go off without a hitch, right? Without having to necessarily worry about uh, anybody certainly interfering. That's not necessarily the case, uh, as Carmara does, in fact, um, have her puppeteer back at work once again, uh, and we get to see exactly the sort of reign of destruction that Dargon dishes out in this episode as Carmara's puppet. Great special effects in the beginning here when Dargon's attacking the city. Uh, love getting the opportunity to see the uh, Guts Falcon at work once again. Um, really ducking and dodging between Dargon's attempts. Um, just seeing it fly amongst all the explosions was pretty incredible. Also, uh, really love the fight that uh, the Falcon wind up putting up against somebody as uh, formidable as that of Dargon. But the one thing that I really enjoyed, though, about Dargon in this episode, though, was at least the pushback that he was giving Carmara, right? Um, getting the opportunity to see that any time that we saw Yuna um, sort of in peril or in danger um, due to Dargon's attack, I like the idea that when it became a little bit too close for comfort, um, we did see Dargon come back to his normal self in regards to really um, pledging to protect Yuna certainly at all costs. I thought it was actually a pretty cool scene to see like puppet Dargon, if you will, um, you know, unleashing havoc and the explosions coming up and seeing Yuna thrusted into the air uh, and then yet being caught by a Dargon who immediately was able to take himself out of that trance and from under that spell uh, and protect the person that he truly loves. So uh, I really enjoyed kind of seeing that part. I think it continues to solidify uh, Dargon's appreciation of humans, uh, how impactful they truly have been to this particular character all season long. You know, I will say this, there is a part of me that's a, a little bit bummed that Dargon got taken out so quickly. Uh, I was really hoping that this was maybe 
uh, a little bit of a longer storyline for Dargon, or at least throughout the season, maybe saw more of that particular growth, because I felt like there was more story for him to certainly have been told. So the idea of him getting taken out in here, there was a part of me that was kind of hoping that maybe he would be standing side by side with Trigger, along with Trigger Dark, in order to kind of take on Carmera at the end of the day. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just not necessarily the case, right? I mean, listen, Dargon certainly did put up a great fight able to fight back against that spell if you will while he was in the city but ultimately meeting his demise at the end of that honorable battle uh because of carmara and her uh powers just being a little bit too overwhelming not even really able to stop himself from trying to harm yuna at the end of the day uh and i think um the fact that alone that i think dargon was able to recognize that willing to sacrifice himself in, a, in the sense of letting the gut select team and Ultraman trigger like, hey, if I can't control this, you guys have got to certainly take me out. So it definitely seemed like he understood that his end was certainly near. Uh, I love the fact that Akito even takes it into his own hands in regards to dishing out sort of that final blow. Um, I am a little bit intrigued by Akito's sort of last line here when Dargon goes to explode but he refers to Akito and his uh gut select team as my friends or something like that or my friend um and uh, you know Akito responds in a sense of like you know don't come at me with that like don't call me your friend sort of thing I guess Akito's a little bit pissed off at the idea that he still tried to attack Yuna and wasn't strong enough to fight against it it almost felt like Akito had a little bit of animosity there I, I don't want to go so far as to say it was a little little bit of jealousy because he knows Dargon was kind of in love with her and Akito clearly is in love with Yuna even though I'm I'm you know I feel like that's kind of I don't know if that's been fully friend zoned or not but um I did find Akito's response to that relatively interesting it, despite the fact of Dargon really um uh, admiring the humans right despite um, them being physically weak I think he definitely sees where their strength in numbers comes from and their strength in just believing and loving in one another sort of thing something that was truly the demise of the giants of darkness so definitely admired the humans and certainly what they were definitely capable of so uh, I really enjoyed Dargon this season I truly did I again I I think if there was any disappointment for me I wish that they maybe explored a little bit more with it uh, or at least maybe be dragged out his battle and push back uh, with Carmara at least for maybe one more episode to kind of help out the situation a little bit longer but we'll definitely see what winds up happening in the future but unfortunately for us uh, Dargon uh, has to say farewell in this episode um i also want to talk a little bit about the carmara versus trigger battle um she whipped that ass man i mean talk about having just a, an enormous amount of um animosity towards Kengo for taking not only the love of her life but also stealing the eternity core and all that power from her we get to see that at the end of the day um, even with the demise of Dargon she manages to absorb the last remnants of it which mind you I got to say the demise of Dargon in regards to that final attack from the nurse Desi we get the opportunity to see Akito using the Ultraman reboot um, um, power key uh, I'm assuming from that crossover event that he had uh, he managed to make a, a key out of it or a power up mode and he uses it sort of as the final attack for the nurse Desi and it was just really cool to kind of see it unleashed sort of point blank range if you will the nurse Desi like thrusting itself through Dargon's body incredible attack uh, but even despite that attack just the remnants of his darkness is in fact absorbed by Carmara who's wiping her mouth again sort of thing from just having a, another delay delicious darkness treats uh poor guys man they just a uh, man eater to the uh, the utmost extent in this episode for sure um but uh, we get to see that Carmara does something that i didn't think was going to be achievable in this season and that is in fact capture yuna right yuna winds up dishing out all of her energy trying to protect herself against dargon i'm assuming if anything that might have been what Carmara's plan was all along you know weaken her defenses and what she's weak and vulnerable taking advantage of it and so she captures Yuna forces her to open up the gateway to the eternity core 
and manages to merge with it finally. So she definitely has gotten at least one part of her plan, and that is, in fact, acquiring the Eternity Core power. And I'm assuming this is her transforming into the Megalothor. Um, they call it the evil god, if you will. Uh, it seems as though the captain of the Nurse Desi was either, like, I'm curious if they're familiar with this type of beast, or maybe the, the, the captain has just done his homework in regards to knowing what the meaning or the coming of Megalothor certainly means for earth in general and its demise perhaps right because he was taught he just felt like he was talking like poems and ver like, like uh, proverbs and psalms and stuff like some sort of scripture about shadows and like i'm just like what is this guy talking about like does he know something i don't know about the coming of the megalothor so i i'm hoping that we get a little bit more explanation but i'm under the impression that by carmera absorbing the eternity core we now have a new beast on our hands in the megalothor to be honest with you guys, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Give me two more episodes uh, to see how this season finale concludes. Um, because there's a part of me that was really hoping that if Carmera obtains the Eternity Core, that we would actually see her. You know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, maybe just a brand new suit in her power-up, if you will. But the idea of turning into a beast, I don't want to say it takes away the fun for me, but... You know, Carmara in her human form just felt like things were a lot more personal, you know, um, a lot more sort of on the line and at stake. Don't get me wrong. The Megalothor looks terrifying as can be, right? He looks like he was birthed to go ahead and destroy Earth and just planets in general and the galaxy. So um, really cool costume design. But I again, it does, you know, it almost feels like now this is just another case of a creature of the week sort of thing, right? And I think for me, I've really, while I've enjoyed all the big sequences and the battles between the monsters, I do like the hand-to-hand -hand combat that we've had with the Giants of Darkness facing off against Trigger. So I'm hoping that um, the Carmera human form def definitely pops back up at some particular point in time for part of the uh, final battle. Because for me in her human form, it just felt personal, felt unique in its own sense, and not just another monster of the week sort of scenario. But we'll see how it plays out. I'm just a little bit critical of it as of right now, but I definitely want to see how it plays out as the series winds up wrapping itself up but i'm loving what i'm seeing so far i truly am if again I, I wish we had more carmara human form but we'll see how that turns out and maybe a little bit more dargon in this episode and maybe even in next week's episode i probably would have preferred a little bit more but what we did get at least i certainly appreciated and enjoyed for this particular episode and the soundtrack once again uh this season has not disappointed me when it comes to hitting me with great music at important moments and time for an episode episode uh, and to really culminate this episode with everything that was going uh, the theme song for Carmara and her transformation into the Megalothor gave me gave me chills man gave me goosebumps so uh, I, I'm really hoping that they go ahead and certainly continue uh, with this pace and this anticipation and excitement going into the last two episodes don't hit me with the filler episode uh, and I'll be a very happy camper let's definitely keep up the intensity and the storytelling and the emotions when it comes to these characters and this plot line so uh, we'll see, guys. But remember, at the end of the day, these are just simply my A-plus opinions. I definitely want to go ahead and know yours. If there's anything that I missed, though, whether that be character moments, plot details, things that you want to go ahead and further talk about, let your thoughts be known in the comment section box below after this particular video. Uh, and that should be it for us, guys. Also, just to give you a heads up, um, since we're almost done with the season of Ultraman Trigger in general, I've been meaning to remove this Patreon.com uh, slash A-plus opinion opinions we have in fact closed our patreon we've actually canceled our patreon uh just because it's become a lot more difficult around here to keep up with that additional content if you will but what we did decide to do is um part of our patreon we had a discord community um if you guys would like to join the discord community it is now made available for the public i will go ahead and put a link in the description box below if you've never been a part of a discord think of it very much as a forum community not only 
can you talk Ultraman Trigger, other tokusatsu information or in topics and stuff. But we also have a plethora of other subjects for you guys to definitely talk about sports, movies, television, Marvel, DC, whatever you guys are certainly um, uh, into is probably available on our Discord. Just in an attempt for us to continue to build our community outside of the YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to go ahead and join our Discord, please go ahead and do so. A link is in the description box below. But we definitely will be back next week with a brand new episode of Ultraman Trigger Review. So until then, do me a big favor. As always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And keep it A+. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.